instead of aiming it downwards, if I do that, it means I'm going to be using the middle part to light it up. So what I'll do is tilt it upwards. Time's been moving slowly, so we already in too deep. Can't get no sleep on each other. Heavy teasing all day, and when the sun sets, you asking me to come through, kick it with you. Night turn to morning, do then you feel it freshening, lose control. You Give you like a very decent exposure if you want to bring the. Let me start it again. <laughs> What I want to do today is just basically show you how to balance natural light with a strobe. I've been getting questions about how to do this and so I just want to do a quick demo for you guys to see. Uh, the setup is really simple. She's just sitting on an old canoe over here and we have like this bright backdrop um, going on and where she is is in shape. So we have a little bit of an advantage because we don't have any direct light sitting here that we have to compete with and so all we need to use our artificial light to do is just expose for her properly. So what I'll start off by doing is exposing for the background, make sure I bring it to a level that is you know good enough for what I want and just balance this artificial light to match those two exposures and hopefully make it look very seamless. What I'm using right now is the Flashpoint 400 Pro and I'm modifying it in a 120 centimeter softbox. Typically, what I'll do is just use the light like this to light up my subject, right? But what I also want to do is, instead of using this middle part to light up our scene, I want to use like the spread of light that is coming from the edges to light us up. So what I'll do first of all is position this in such a way that I'm getting like almost a front light. I'll be shooting from like this direction. So something like this just to get a bit of an angle for my light. And once I'm okay with the position, instead of aiming it downwards, if I do that, it means I'm going to be using the middle part to light it up. So what I'll do is tilt it upwards somewhere like this. Right now I'm just guessing, but when you're doing this on your own, you need to play around with it till you find the spot that is going to give you like a very good balance of soft light and still bright enough to light up your subject. So this way, we're throwing a lot of the hot spots away and then just using that soft part to light our subject. So I'll just do some demos and you guys will see how I build the shots from exposing for our background and then adding our fill light from that special light. In case you're wondering, I'm using my Canon R5 and I'm pairing it with a Sigma 85 1.4 art lens. I'm sure I'm going to be cranking my shutter speed a lot and that is because I want to kill the ambient light and then we'll compensate again with uh, the light. And I'm, I'm using a Godox trigger to control this light. So let's start building this so you guys can see exactly what's happening. First things first, I need to bring my exposure down because when I turn on a camera, I'm at 1 over 250 1.4 ISO 400. So what I want to do is just bring my exposure all the way down and I start by reducing my ISO all the way to 100 and I want to keep my aperture where it is to have a shallow depth and I'm now going to crank my shutter speed until I get the exposure that looks good. And as you can see the histogram is also beginning to shift to the left. That means that we are really underexposing. So somewhere around 1 over 5000 looks okay but it looks like I'm also just really, really underexposing. I will just open it up a bit, maybe go to 1 over 2,500. Just take a test shot so you guys see what's happening. So something like that. Yeah, you can see it's, she's underexposed, but we have like good lighting in the background and stuff. I'll turn on the trigger. Right now it's at 1 over 8.7, and I'll just take a quick test. And that looks amazing. You can see that we've been able to get like a very good exposure on our subject as well. Yeah, that looks good. One more. 
even though keeping the shutter speed at 1 over 5000 I could have still used my light to expose for my subject correctly I just felt that would have looked a little bit too artificial because I was really really darkening down our background but by bringing my shutter speed back down to 1 over 2500 even though I was okay with 5000 it just allows me to include more of the ambient light and so my flash doesn't really do a lot even though it is adding a bit of contrast and punch onto the image but it looks rather good this way in my opinion closer and three two one yeah relax this hand maybe now put it yeah just like that perfect yeah that's it that's it that's it so just like with any other photo shoot after you get your lighting right and you get everything to look the way that you want after doing several tests now it's just up to you to now capture as many frames as you can and i was changing between landscape and portraits and just trying to get a lot of variation to the set so that when i come back and i'm picking the images it will be easier i have more variety and i can tell a better story with those images so at this point it was just up to me and my model now to work together so sometimes she'll do certain interesting poses that i like and i'll just make her maintain that and then just pop in a few direction so that it looks better or more flattering for the camera so that's pretty much what i was doing just working with my subject trying to get different expressions trying to get different moves and create an interesting set of images yeah that's it that's, that's it maybe cross both arms down here like that yeah, like you're just relaxing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's it. Ooh, that's stunning. And look away again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. Look away that way, yes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. One last shot. Okay. I found a new spot for us to shoot in, and I've also changed my lens to the 51.4. It's pretty much the same thing going on. But we just propped it up by giving her a book. Um, my settings, I'm at 1 over 2500, f1.4, ISO 100. So now we can start just taking a few frames. Ooh, that's, I love that. Yeah, that's nice. I can also go higher, get more of the, you know, the backdrop showing, yeah. The reason why I love shooting with my 2470 is that I'm able to get a variety of focal lengths and angles easily just by turning my zoom, you know, so I can zoom from 24 all the way to 70. But in this case, I wanted to shoot at 1.4 because the 2470 goes wide to 2.8 and I just really wanted to blend the background in this case. So I wanted to use a 1.4 and I'd already shot with the 85 and I had a specific look. But this time I wanted to introduce a little bit more of the environment so I wanted a wider lens and I went with a 50 because I could shoot at 1.4 and it's also because it's wider than the 85 just to see what else I will be able to create with a new focal length. Just finished this. Yeah, that's it. Amazing. Yes, 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 yes. You don't wanna go.